Good morning, everyone. So now we are starting with a series in biostatistics with our Dr. Kamal Keshore, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Biostatistics, PGIMER, Chandigarh. Looking forward to it, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So, Charles Whelan, a Stanford University professor who have written a wonderful book, Naked Statistics. So I'm quoting his book, Regression Analysis is a Hydrogen Bomb of a Statistics Arsenal. If you analyze this statement, then you will realize the potential of regression. Similarly, so when you have a great potential of a product or of any treatment or intervention, you have great responsibility. So similarly, when we apply regression analysis, we need to have a lot of responsibility. And we should not take an easy to go approach. Now, when I'm presenting regression in front of you, which is a standard 30 hour to 45 hour course module in one or one and a half hour session. So I'm squeezing in a lot of information. And then after that, maybe eliminating much of the information from presenting you. So this is not an exhaustive presentation, but hopefully this is a capsule size information which will get your bearing right to run the regression analysis. Without a further ado, let's first of all begin by few disclaimers. So my first disclaimer is that this is my personal journey of learning the regression, my interaction with the student, the faculty, whatever I found, they found that they need to know. So that is what I'm bringing in my experience. So it is in no way extensive explanation or the whole of regression. It's just the beginning. Now we have divided the total regression into seven chapters. So where we'll be looking at the first chapter and then the second chapter will start from where we'll be leaving the first chapter. So that way, all these seven chapters can be independent unit and you can directly go and look at those chapters. The third disclaimer is regression is a very vast technique. There are multiple types of regression. So this is just the linear regression for you for the timing. And it's a tip of an iceberg, not even regression also we are covering in detail. But hopefully it will give you the right flavor to start with the regression without getting into the technical nitty-gritty and without consulting number of books or journal articles or resources. What's our chapter one? As my guide always used to say to me, Kamal, you should always go from known to unknown. Uh, now, I was not a part of the previous session, so I do not know how much detail like previously you people have covered. So I have just, the first chapter is just brush up of the brief concepts, which you might have already covered. But those who have not covered, it is a new learning for them. Those who have already know all these concepts, it may be a quick relearning or re-emphasis of those concepts. The number one thing is the most important characteristic is we need to know the measurements, how we are measuring. When we talk about our measurements, which we measure in terms of the variables such as height, weight, gender, can be segregated into the four broad category. Nominal scale, which is just the naming. Right? It is just for identifiable. So why I'm telling this thing is because computer take the input in terms of the number or numerical. And then it is the responsibility of the person who is running that number that what this number is conveying me. 
And the many a time people do not understand the subtle differences between the zero and one of the nominal scale and zero and one of maybe ratio interval scale and zero and one in the ordinal scale. That is why it's important to cover. So nominal is just naming category. When we have a binary as an outcome variable such as success, failure, treated, non-treated, okay, died, survived, it's a binary outcome variable. More than that two category, colors such as red, blue, green is a nominal variable. Ordinal scale, when the number such as 1, 2, 3, 4, not only tell me these 1, 2, 3, 4 category are different, but there is certain order or hierarchy in it, then we're calling it as an ordinal scale. The frequent example you might have encountered is the ordinal scale of the data such as pain, low pain, no pain, moderate pain, okay, or severe pain, such as this. We don't differentiate much between an interval scale and the ratio scale besides the difference between a true zero. I'll skip that part, but most of our height, weight, and other things are basically on interval and ratio scale. Now, why this is important? Because the statistical test is decided on the basis of what is your level of variable, independent variable, and dependent variable, for which we'll be coming later. That's the first part. You need to know about the scale. The second important thing is I have seen many a time to my experience that the people record the data in a certain way. Now, when I look at this data, it's a wonderful data to read to the human eye, to our mind, because human beings work on the basis of heuristics. Whereas computer works, work on the basis of specific algorithms. So whatever looks good to you may not be an ideal input point for the computer or for the software to analyze the data. Like one good example is when we make certain kind of the notes or enter the data, we enter the maybe the title of the study, then after that a variable under those, what are the our demographic characteristics, maybe comorbidities, then the treatment modules, and under that we make a survey. So it's good to read for I, but not good to analyze with the computer. So what are the problems here? If you say me, whatever are in the red lines are the problems. The top row red line, which is depicted here, let me now laser point. So the point which is depicted here is, now we have many variable. It is left eye. So left eye, see a number, surgery done on a so and so date. So wait, which is repeated here. There are multiple variables covered in a single cell, which should not be the case. And ideally, not many variables should be left also, okay, blank. No row or column should be left blank purposefully for the sake of like we cannot able to read. That's the number one another thing we need to understand this. Similarly, if you look at this case, it may be good to read for me in page and six how it is coming by a slash. But computer cannot read it. So now I have to separate it. For age, it has to be separate. And sex, it has to be separate. So those are the two things. And similarly, maybe if you look at this case also, it's not ideal for the my data analysis. Similarly, you can look at one more example of untidy data. It is also known as uh, untidy data <coughs> or unclean data. Now, when you look at the red column first of all see here it is written control and here the cases are starting at the bottom of control there is no as such problem in writing this way also whether case come first or control come first or after each control their case should come no problem but we need to make a separate category for control and cases like here group and another column should come, whether it belongs to the control 111 and 2, case, 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 right? And then another major issue which I have seen with the data is many of the students and many of the people apply the search who share their data with others, share the potential identifier of the people. So you see name is a potential identifier, not to share it with anybody. 
except you or your co-guide or just maybe the main people who is analyzing the data, CR number, IB number, then concomitant medication, basically, different medication we are talking about. This is not the way to enter the data. I assume you have covered most of this thing, but still, I just want to re-emphasize. Now here, treatment, as the patient get multiple treatment for maybe multiple diseases they are going or in certain other situation, they may be taking certain drugs. So you want to make a maintain a record. If you want to analyze, it's a good for record, but it is not good for analysis purpose. For analysis purpose, you have to make a different column for each of the drug. Let us say Weisslon, you'll write at the top in the treatment for Memphigus or like the treatment uh, Weisslon. And then after that, you will write whether somebody has taken it or not taken it, Weisslon, yes or no. Similarly, Azithoprene, as the variable name and then yes or no. So that's how it has to be. And every variable has to be separate. You may be asking that I have shown you unstructured, untidy or unclean data, but then what is a structured data? A structured data is normally defined as where each individual represent a row and then column represent a variable. So when I talk about the structured data and if you want to enter it into an Excel, this heading will not come. This will be eliminated. So our data will start from this to this point, okay? From serial, age, religion. Now, when you'll be looking at this data, you will be seeing, I have coded religion as one and two. You will say, what is this? There is no religion as one and two. We used to give a name. So that is why for that, we used to have the metadata or the dictionary, data dictionary. So here I'm defining a religion. Legion of the participant, one may be Hindu, two may be Sikh, three may be Muslim, four may be Christian. Because for a continuous data such as interval and ratio, these categories are well defined, but not for other ordinal or nominal data. So there we need to define. So that is why if you see district level health survey, national family and health survey, NFHS, those data set come with the data dictionary. Okay, and that is how you need to prepare the data if you want to communicate to statistician. Broadly, when we talk about the data, we have two types of the data. One is known as a long format, where if you have collected the information from a patient serially, a patient has been called for the repeated follow-up, either to enter it vertically, first patient, second patient, and then gender should be reported. No cell should be left blank. Although I know so the gender one is not going to change. It is going to remain it as a whether male or a female. But then, because for the analysis, we need to fill these value what are those. And maybe it's neurological status and time status. These are only the time variable status. That is how you need to enter the data for the follow-up data. Same data can be entered in terms of the wide format data or a cross-sectional data, the data which we enter for the regression sort of the technique, which we are going to talk linear regression. So here, if you see gender one and zero, it may be seen intuitive to you people that, okay, we need to enter data this way. And mostly for cross-sectional study and the case control study, the data is entered into the wide format where every variable is entered as a separate column. The challenge only come when you enter or when you undertake the longitudinal study or the follow-up study, basically, okay? That to depend upon the what technique you want to apply. Uh, now, when you talk about the data cleaning, so many a time we are working on many of the projects and other things, so there are some things which you need to keep in mind. Always give a easy-to-remember workbook name, which we usually don't do in the beginning. Think about it. Then many a time we copy the data in the workbook multiple times. Okay, this data set, this data set, but we don't name the data set. We just leave the data set name by default. And then ultimately, when we have four or five data set, we do not know what is the current or clean data set on which we are working. So choose these, all these things very, very carefully. Why I'm highlighting it? Because I'm sure you must have covered these things. So I'll not go into the detail of all those things, but all these are important requirements. 
What is a logical error? Maybe if many of you people have not heard about logical error is, let us say you ask the patient to go for a diagnostic testing and the patient have gone for the testing and then the, the test results are negative, but inadvertently someone while entering the data wrote that positive, the result have come positive. So these are logical error. What would be another logical error? When there is a gender variable, let us say gender variable, whether somebody is a male or a female, and when there is a pregnancy status also you have captured. In the case of men, somebody has written pregnant, yes. Right, so that's also a logical error. So maybe this rest is self-explanatory. Now, when we talk about the, before we go into the regression, just to one, maybe the final thing I want to say is maybe you need to look at your data and adapt a good data clinical practices. Now, let me give you an example. Let us say from your study designing to your writing of the results, it take one hour for you to do all the things, which means from conceptualizing your this thing to submitting your thesis. Now, assuming if 15 to 20 or 30 minutes is taken by you, half an hour is taken by you to collect a data, and then once you give it to the statistician for data analysis, so normally it takes from that rest of the half an hour, statistician take maybe 20 to 25 minutes to clean the data. The running part is easy. The data analysis part is easy. So always take adequate precaution while entering the data and cleaning the data. Think carefully before starting your entering the data. That was all the sort of the basic which I need for you to remember to go for to our chapter two, which is about the regression. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, sir.